What's up, fragrant world? Welcome back to another Stay Fresh production. My name is Justin Copeland. On this channel, Stay Fresh Productions, we talk about everything fragrance related. If you have an interest in that kind of content, welcome to the channel for you. You're in the right place. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. And if you do like this video, please hit that like button. It really helps with my visibility across YouTube. Thanks so much in advance. I'm in a very vulnerable position right now. I'm literally right next to my refrigerator. It's currently not running, but I feel like it could start running at any time. So if it does, we might just have to deal with the sound. So I do apologize, but hopefully we don't have to deal with that. Also, I did not intend to have my clock randomly in the shot, but such is life. Okay, today is a very special video because this is an update video. I did this video years ago, I want to say four years ago, how to apply your fragrance. And honestly, I can't even watch that video anymore. It makes me cringe. Whenever I have people commenting on it, I still have people commenting on it, asking, you know, for clarification on things on the video. And I just want to like, ah, I just want to delete it, but I just haven't deleted it because I don't really agree with what I was saying in that video. I don't apply my fragrance like that anymore. So I feel like, you know what? I need to update it. So that's what we're doing here. This is 2021 current Justin, a little bit more seasoned, a little bit more experienced. This is my take on how to apply your fragrance. This is how I do it. This is not the definitive way, but if you are looking for guidelines, this is a way to do it. We're going to be considering a number of factors, not just where to spray, but also what are you actually spraying on your body? How does it behave? Things like that. So we're going to dive a little bit into concentrations, not too heavily. This isn't going to be too much of a technical video, but we do have to consider that when we are applying our fragrance. The first thing I want to say, this is a common mistake a lot of people make. Decants. This decant came courtesy of Decan X, by the way. They're awesome. Use my code down below to get a good little discount off of a purchase. Anyway, decants, you might already know this, but maybe you don't think about it. When you spray this thing, I don't want to spray it on me because this is strong. Mancera Oud Lemon Mint. Check it out. Tiny little puff. I'm not wearing this today, so get away from me. It smells great though. They don't put out much, and especially not as much as a full bottle would. So if you're gonna spray this thing, two sprays probably counts as one. So if you're gonna put on three sprays of this, you would do one, two, three. And that's how you get the full effect. So keep that in mind. It's hard to really judge performance from a decant, again, unless you're putting on as much as a full bottle would give you. Just wanted to point that out to you. Anyway, let's dive into this. I have a number of fragrances laid out here in front of me. I basically have them lined up from weakest to strongest, but even within their categories, there is variation. I'm going to get to that. So the first category would be something representing an eau de cologne. This is your lightest concentration. I think you're usually dealing with two to 4% fragrance oils. I don't actually own an eau de cologne in my collection. I was looking and I was like, man, I don't own a single technical eau de cologne concentration. But I do have fragrances that function in that way in terms of their performance, in terms of their profile, and just how they wear on the skin. Um, this fragrance comes to mind. This is called Blue Seduction from Antonio Banderas. The funny thing is, at least on the bottle, the concentration is nowhere to be found. At the very least, I don't have a sticker or anything. I suspect it's an eau de toilette, but this thing barely gets four hours on my skin. So I kind of consider it an eau de cologne. It's a nice scent. It is aquatic, has a fruity melon vibe to it. It's a little sea salty in a way, a little marine. Has a bit of a sexiness to it. It's a little generic, but it's really nice. Some easy to throw on, super cheap, 200 ml bottle. You can probably get under 20 bucks. I'm gonna link it down below, but it's where it's super light. So something like this, obviously you can spray a little bit heavier. Now I do wanna talk a little bit about where I spray my fragrance. I tend to stick to the same zone, always usually around the neck. So I'm gonna always be spraying kind of the back of the sides of the neck, behind the ears. You hear this all the time. So I'll put some here, I'll put some here. I'll even consider the back area of my neck, the very back. If I'm gonna put it anywhere else, I might put it under my shirt. I call it a personal spray. It's just for me every now and then. 
I can get a whiff and I can just be about my day. I just love it. It uplifts me throughout the day. And if I'm wearing a collared shirt, which I don't have on, if the collar is open, I will actually spray my collar bones. So I'll put one inside the open collar, right on the collar bones. And that allows the scent to kind of radiate from out of my shirt. And I can smell it and people who get close can also smell it. I don't spray the front of my neck. I don't spray my chest. That's just me. Why? Because I don't want it overwhelming me all day long, rising up into my nostrils so that I go nose blind to it. If I put it more near the back, it'll waft around me every now and then, but it's not going to overwhelm me. And it's going to leave a good trail as I walk, especially if you put it right on the back of the neck. And again, putting it kind of behind the ears allows people again who come close to smell it. So you just have a nice controlled bubble. It's not just going all over the place. You might notice I haven't talked about spraying the arms or the wrists. You can totally do that. I just tend to not do that. I don't like my fragrance just kind of all over the place. I like it kind of centralized and I can just really control how much I'm putting here to control the bubble rather than putting it on all my limbs. So how much would I spray of a fragrance that's this light? Again, I barely get four hours out of it. It doesn't really project very well. And the sillage, I don't even know. Maybe borderline non-existent. I would probably put on at least six sprays of this. So here's what I would do. I'm not gonna spray it on now. I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'll probably put one under the shirt for seven. And honestly, that's all I need. I don't really spray my clothes. I also didn't mention that. I used to kind of spray the shoulder area. I do think that is a good area to do. I'm not going to say don't do it. I just don't personally do it, at least not in this moment of my life. I tend to stick to skin. So I'm going seven sprays on a very light scent like this. If I need it to last longer, I can reapply it. Simple as that. So that is the only fragrance I have in that category for Eau de Cologne, even though it may not be. But now I have Bonafide Eau de Toilettes, I have Bonafide Eau de Parfums, and I have Bonafide extract to parfums to show you they're all a little bit different so you got to be mindful of the fragrance and how it wears and how it behaves on the skin and in the air before you commit to how much you're going to spray on so let's start with eau de toilette bulgari man this is abysmal in terms of performance marginally better than the antonio banderas i might get five hours out of this maybe and by the end it's just a wispy characterless that's not a word but maybe it is characterless vetiver there's just nothing really to it opens really nice but the dry down is just boring and bland and just kind of unfortunate something like this i would spray pretty much the same way i sprayed blue seduction so again probably seven sprays one two three four five six one under and that's really all i would need again if i need more i can apply more because this stuff is pretty inexpensive. You can spray it pretty liberally and it's easy to replace. Now here's another eau de toilette. Technically the same concentration, probably not the same concentration of oils in terms of percentage. I couldn't tell you the percentages, but there is a range for every concentration. Again, we had two to four for eau de cologne. Eau de toilette is usually at least five, maybe up to like 15%, usually between five and 15. It's a wide range. We have Euphoria Intense from Calvin Klein. This is noticeably stronger than the Bulgari. I wouldn't call it beast mode by any means, but it is present. Now it is a sweeter scent. Sweeter scents do tend to have more presence, so keep that in mind. They can be stronger than fresher scents. It is not citrus based. You might have an aromatic nature in here like lavender, but there is like a warm amber in here. There's even some oud. There's a spicy ginger that does kind of help it kick. But this Eau de Toilette, you're probably gonna get at least seven hours out of this. So this one, I might be a little bit more conservative with. I might do one, two, three, four, five, and just do five sprays, maybe a personal spray for six. I do tend to spray light. I know there's people who are in the school of thought that you should just That's not a part of my personality. I'm not a super loud person. I don't want my fragrance to be louder than me. It's an imbalance. So this is how I do it. You can obviously spray more, but these are just baselines. One thing I will say, it's very easy to spray too little. Two sprays of an eau de toilette, no. You can put on more than that. I would put on at least four, three or four, at least. 
and you should be good. You're not going to be obnoxious. You will be noticed, especially with something like this that is a little bit more concentrated. Now, here's another eau de toilette, but this one really persists. I just talked about this recently. This is Cartier and this is Declaration d'un Soir. Gorgeous, spicy, woody rose scent, different types of spices like cardamom, maybe some pepper in here. And again, rose is primary and you do have some sandalwood as it dries. Very, very elegant stuff. And this stuff will persist. This stuff leaves a beautiful sillage and it just hangs in the air for a long time. This is stronger than you would think. I probably wouldn't put on more than five sprays of this. So I would do one, two, three, four, five. If I had a collared shirt on, which is probably what I would want to wear with a scent like this, I'd probably do one, two, three, and then one in each collar, four and five. Again, pretend I have a collar on and that's all you need. An elegant scent profile like this, you don't want it to be too strong. Otherwise it loses its elegance. It becomes too boisterous, too eager. So again, just how I see it, but you do gotta test your fragrances to make sure. Don't just go by the concentration. Yes, it says eau de toilette. I don't know if you're gonna be able to read that. It does say eau de toilette, but they're not all treated equally, so keep that in mind. Okay, let's move on to our eau de parfum. Now in theory, eau de parfums are more concentrated and therefore stronger than eau de toilettes and eau de colognes. This implies that they are going to leave a more rich, dense trail. They're going to last on the skin longer, but not necessarily mean that they're going to project more off the skin. I hear this all the time. I hear people say, well, if it's stronger, that means it should project, it should push off the skin more. Not necessarily. If you're dealing with a denser oil concentration and more richer notes, you might be dealing with heavier molecules. Not like citruses, which are very volatile, which will fly off the skin. But if you don't have those, then it's not gonna fly off the skin. It's gonna sit closer, but it, again, it's gonna last longer and it's gonna leave that trail. It's gonna linger in the air much more easily. It's not gonna dissipate out of the air. Now, this is an eau de parfum that you would think would last long because again, it's in the name eau de parfum, but this one actually does not last that long. It's a little bit of an exception to the rule here. This is from Fragrance Dubois, one of my favorites from the house. This is called Santal Complet. Now this is interesting to me. You'll notice it says parfum, but it's really not. On the bottom, I don't know if that's gonna come out. You can see, or if not, it says eau de parfum. So this is technically an eau de parfum but it behaves almost like an eau de toilette, to be honest. The scent profile itself is very airy, kind of transparent. So the profile does play into its performance. It was not intended to be a rich scent. It's not intended to smell dense. It smells pretty open, but it is on the sweeter side. It has a creamy sandalwood, has coconut in there, really gorgeous stuff. I've heard that it used to be stronger. I can't attest to that, but it does not last that long. It lasts, on my skin, maybe six hours, maybe it'll push seven. You might expect more from an eau de parfum. It does not really project much at all, but it will leave a decent trail for the first few hours, maybe first two to three hours. It will be smelled around you. But after again, that sixth, seventh hour, you may not really detect it very much at all. So again, that's why it's important to check and to test them. Although it says it in the name eau de parfum, you know, it may not live up to what you would expect. Because it is lighter, I would put at least six sprays of this on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe a seventh under the shirt. If I'm wearing a collared shirt, which this does kind of call for because it is a little bit elegant, I might do one, two, three, four, five. I might even just go six, seven. Maybe eight under the shirt. And the eighth one almost doesn't count. You can get away with seven on this one. Now, something a little bit stronger, more on the richer side of things, Dolce Gabbana, the one eau de parfum. Not the strongest scent, but for me, it's strong enough. It kind of straddles eau de toilette, eau de parfum territory in a bit for a lot of people. And because of that reason, for some people, it doesn't last very long, maybe five, six hours. For some people, you might get up to 10. I'm in the latter camp. I usually get at least seven to eight, possibly more depending on the conditions of my skin or the weather, something like that. But this is one that I wouldn't consider a strong fragrance. It is present, it will be noticed, but 
it's not overwhelming. It wasn't intended to be. You can apply a little bit more. This one, I usually would go maybe at least five, maybe up to eight sprays, but typically no more than seven. One, two, three, four, five, and maybe six under the shirt. If I'm feeling extra lucky, if I'm gonna be outside, because that makes a difference, how much air you're gonna have around you. One, two, three, four, five, six and then that seventh might be under the shirt. So keep in mind of how much space you're gonna have. Be courteous to others. So this one, it's pretty strong, not too strong. You can get away with spraying a little bit heavy, but I wouldn't go crazy with it. Now, we have another Eau de Parfum here, kind of like the Cartier. This one behaves perhaps closer to Parfum territory. We have Raja, this is called Oligarch, one of my absolute favorites from the house. Beautiful scent, very rich, and dense but fresh very complex but it ultimately comes off citrusy quite herbaceous a little spicy very woody has a very prominent juniper berry note which makes it quite sharp even a little astringent but just elegant stuff touch of a sweetness in there and actually quite dense again eau de parfum but much denser than the two i just talked about this one i'd probably go with five sprays max on this I might do one, two, three. I would probably wanna wear this with a college shirt, in which case four and five. If not, one, two, three, four, five. I think that's all I need for this. It is pretty strong. That much is gonna last me pretty much all day, guaranteed. So again, important to test your fragrances so you know how does it actually live up to the name of that concentration that's on the bottle. Okay, we're moving on. To our last category, extract the parfum, also called parfum extract, whatever you wanna call it. I have two here. Both of these are very, very strong. We'll start with this one. This is actually the weaker of the two, believe it or not. This is Fan Your Flames from Nishane. Dense stuff, quite a dense profile. It has a bit of an elegance to it, but so unique. I could talk on and on about this stuff. Such a great scent. You got to try it. You can sample it at DecanX. Again, link down below. Something like this. If I'm going to be outside, I think I would get away with five sprays, believe it or not. Five sprays of this would be okay if you're going to be outdoors and it's going to be a little bit cooler. So like a nighttime event or something like that. But if not, if you're going to be inside, I wouldn't go more than three sprays on this. One, two, three. Maybe four, one, two, three, four. That way that fourth one is just literally, I'm leaving it behind me at all times. <laughs> it's always escaping the scene of the crime, but leaving people with a nice scent in the process. You don't need much. If you put on a whole lot, then that's your thing, I guess. People are really gonna smell it. You might be obnoxious. You can ruin a scent profile by applying too much. So keep that in mind. But I just want you to know, even though this is very strong, I'm still gonna put on at least two sprays of this. I do want it to be present. I do want it to last. So I'm not gonna be too stingy with it, but within reason. And this one here, this is a fresh scent, but very strong. This is called Akdeniz. I think it's Turkish for Mediterranean. This is from Unique Luxury, Unique E-Luxury. I'm not sure exactly how they say it. This stuff is so powerful. It is so freaking strong for a fresh scent. Fresh aquatic has almost a woodiness, like a driftwood vibe in there. It even has some fruity nature like pineapple. There's a lot of things going on in this, maybe a little bit musky. Kind of similar to the Fan Your Flames. I would treat it the same way. It is a little bit fresher, so you can probably get away with four sprays. There it is. Hopefully that's not too loud. I'll try to get a little bit closer so you can mainly just hear me. You can probably get away with four sprays of this because of its scent profile. If you're gonna be outside, maybe five. Again, very strong stuff. It's gonna be leaving a huge trail behind you and it's gonna last all day. But again, depending on where you'll be, you can probably get away with a little bit more. You know, three to five sprays with this is pretty good. Again, if you're gonna be inside, just be careful, all right? I do have a little bit of a wild card here we have from Roger Parfums. This is his Parfum Cologne Concentration for Danger. He has a few of these in different scents, if you didn't know. And it's kind of a hybrid concentration. I think it's meant to have the fresh effervescent nature of a Eau de Cologne, but the deep richness and staying power of an Eau de Parfum. 
and it really does have that. It's a very airy scent, very open, but it kind of envelops you and it really does stick around. It doesn't smell like it has a ton of richness to the center, to the core of the scent. It will never be overwhelming. It just kind of becomes ethereal, but it's always there. It hangs around and again, it stays with you all day. It makes it quite versatile, actually. I really like that about this kind of concentration. You can get away with it in the warmer months or even the cooler months. Even this like a sweet kind of warm vanilla scent with some aromatic nature, you could wear this pretty much all year round because of its concentration. Something like this I could apply in a number of different ways. You could get away with a little heavier on this. I wouldn't go more than 10 with something like this because it is quite sweet. It would just become a little bit too much. I might do one, two, three, four, five, six, typically. Maybe a seventh under the shirt or with a college shirt, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can get away with that no problem. This thing is not going to be overwhelming. So that's how I would spray something like this with this hybrid concentration. Okay, I hope you can still hear me over my freaking fridge that always wants attention, but I think it gave us a little bit of time to talk, so I'm happy about that. I would love to know your philosophies on how to apply your fragrance. How do you feel about my methods here? Again, I'm not trying to present the definitive way to do it. This is just how I do it. It's what works for me, and I just wanted to offer it to you, but I would love to know are there any big differences that you do? Are you an oversprayer? Do you do 10 plus sprays no matter what the fragrance is? Let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation. Just be respectful to people. Everyone has differences. Let's respect those differences. If you like the video, please like the video. Once again, it helps me so much. And please subscribe. Join the Fresh Squad here on YouTube. It costs you absolutely not a penny. And you can always change your mind later if you for whatever reason feel inclined to do that. I don't know why you would, because the Fresh Squad is the best squad. No future Justin. Where is he? I guess we got away with that one. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Peace. I'll see you in the next one.